Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sydney and today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me video and I'm going to go through my everyday beauty routine. I am researching the performance of gender through makeup and in YouTube's beauty community to find out more about how gender can be maintained or subverted because the beauty community and YouTube in general is built on user generated content and thus reflects the changing atmosphere of its users. In this video, I will argue that the application of makeup, combined with YouTube's beauty community, is a technology that allows its users to both fit into gender norms but also challenge them. This also means that in order to properly talk about makeup and the performance of gender, we also need to establish a basis of knowledge. Gender often plays a role in social dynamics on YouTube, and thus it's important that we establish beauty vlogging as a performance of gender, as well as an understanding of gender performance itself. First, beauty vlogging is defined as the demonstration and discussion of cosmetic use on YouTube, often from a vlogger's own bedroom. However, I'm going to be in my bathroom instead. Typically, beauty vloggers begin with no makeup and gradually transform themselves with cosmetics and beauty tools into a particular look while giving commentary. Duffy would categorize beauty vlogging as a type of aspirational labor, which she says refers to the typically female content creator's belief that their mostly unpaid work, motivated by passion and the infectious rhetoric of entrepreneurialism, will eventually yield respectable income and rewarding careers. This definition of aspirational labor already has gender inherently built into it. Next, we have to define gender. Connell says that gender is conveyed through the ways that we present our identities, perform symbolic rituals, and perpetuate large-scale institutions. Somewhat similarly, Judith Butler defines gender as a performance. Gender is a historically and hegemonically reproduced relation among socially constituted subjects in specific contexts. In other words, rather than being a fixed attribute in a person, Gender should be seen as a fluid variable which shifts and changes in different contexts and at different times. When we relate the performance of gender to fashion and makeup, this becomes what Connell calls social embodiment, in which we literally embody these social norms, and the body becomes a site of meaning, experience, and expression, and an internalization of cultural norms. I think that this topic is important to discuss because these videos make up, no pun intended, a large portion of the content on YouTube, and some of the top beauty YouTubers or gurus have millions of subscribers, which I think means that they're creating content that people want to watch, and that people are watching them. Because of this, it's important to analyze the metaphorical environment that these videos are produced in, and what implications this might have on viewers. Okay, so now that we've got our base prepared, I'm going to start applying the actual makeup and start applying some concepts. I also just want to preface this by saying that if you haven't noticed already, I'm in no way a makeup professional and this is just me thinking about how makeup functions as a technology of gender. Going back to the history of makeup, Duane theorized makeup as a feminine masquerade. This meant that makeup could highlight as well as challenge the social construction of women as objects or commodities. By flaunting femininity, or purposely performing femininity, women could use makeup to create distance between them and the rest of society, thus creating a mask that can be worn or removed. This idea of makeup as a feminine masquerade exemplifies how gender can be performed through makeup. However, when we perceive makeup as a masquerade, it may create confusion about how women are supposed to utilize makeup and how makeup fits in feminist practices. White writes that women are often shamed for wearing makeup and are equally often shamed for not wearing makeup. Does it make anyone less of a feminist because they choose to invest in beauty culture? While femininity can be performed by beauty vloggers themselves, it can also be policed by other users as well as YouTube's algorithms. Users can do this by commenting on videos by beauty vloggers or by creating their own video responses. In a study analyzing the comments on videos by Ryan Higa and Jenna Mori, researchers found that Jenna receives more critical or hostile comments than Ryan. 
which are often directed towards her appearance. As a result, this demonstrates how comments police the behavior and representation of girls in terms of gendered norms. Gender can also be policed by algorithms. Bishop writes that YouTube itself actively promotes hegemonic feminized cultural outputs created by beauty vloggers with significant embodied social and cultural capital. As a result, YouTube's algorithm, by utilizing video tags and keywords, privileges and rewards feminized content such as beauty, fashion, baking, friendship, and boyfriends, and therefore perpetuates these types of videos and makes them more visible than videos by the same vloggers but with different topics. Okay, so now we've established how makeup and the beauty community can be perceived as a highly feminized space, I'm going to introduce some color and talk about the different kinds of masculinities that can emerge in makeup and YouTube's beauty community. So to begin, Shippers and Connell have a few different components and types of masculinities. Similarly to Butler and Connell's definitions of gender, Shippers notes three components of masculinity. First, masculinity is comprised of social location that individuals, regardless of gender, can move into through practice. Second, masculinity has a set of practices and characteristics understood to be masculine. Third, when these practices are embodied especially by men but also by women, they have widespread cultural and social effects. Along with this, Connell names four different types of masculinity. The first is hegemonic masculinity, which legitimizes the patriarchy and guarantees the dominant position of men and the subordination of women. This model places masculinity and femininity in a hierarchy, with hegemonic masculinity both at the top of the pyramid, yet also at the base of Connell's masculinities. The second type of masculinity is complicit masculinity, which is constructed in ways that realize the patriarchal dividend without being on the front line or openly supporting the patriarchy. They are complicit in supporting hegemonic masculinity. An example of complicit masculinity can be found when men's use of makeup is seen as an extreme indicator of metrosexuality. Metrosexuality is a term used to describe men who care about their appearances and invest time and money into their appearance. However, Hall finds that this term is often used defensively and to explain why some men may use makeup, and to explicitly show that they are not gay. This exemplifies complicit masculinity because by claiming that they are metro, not gay, they are still upholding ideals of hegemonic masculinity. They may be using makeup in a heterosexual way, as in they are using it to make themselves look better, but not to present themselves closer to a feminine ideal. Thus, even though they are not explicitly supporting the ideals of hegemonic masculinity, metrosexuality implies their complicity with these hegemonic ideals. This leads to the third type of masculinity, subordinate masculinities. When compared with hegemonic masculinity as the ideal, subordinate masculinities are seen as the inferior other. For example, in the beauty community, this may be seen as the subordination of male beauty YouTubers by other male YouTubers. The latter may be those who use makeup strictly for practical purposes, while the former use it as a form of art or expression. Or, male beauty YouTubers can be subordinated by female beauty YouTubers, who also hold up hegemonic masculinity as the ideal. The fourth type of Connell's masculinities is marginalized masculinity, which includes those of subordinated classes or racial slash ethnic groups. This relationship is one of authorization and marginalization because hegemonic masculinity is conflated with whiteness and middle class status. As a result, a marginalized masculinity in YouTube's beauty community would not only be a male beauty YouTuber, but one who is also marginalized because of their ethnicity or their wealth or any other intersectionality. So now that we've established some different types of masculinity, we must ask the question, how do all of these concepts relate to the performance of gender on YouTube? One of the first ways that this may be done is by subverting gender roles, to speak broadly. While conducting a study on the difference between audience reception towards male and female YouTubers, researchers found that YouTuber Jenna Marbles performed gender in a way that mocked traditional gender roles and stereotypes by exaggerating gendered behavior. For example, she might lower or raise her pitch in order to exaggerate her role as a boy or a girl. Judith Butler argues that subverting gender roles allows us to challenge and disrupt these problematic constructions of gendered identity. Similarly, male beauty vloggers exemplify how gender roles are subverted. 
As we established earlier, beauty vlogging and makeup has been constructed as a highly feminized space and thus did not contain much room for masculinities in this definition. Men wearing makeup is not a new concept at all, with history and drag and stage and performance. However, with the introduction of YouTube and social media in general, these new technologies of gender have allowed these gender performances to push to the forefront, thus creating subverted gender norms and creating their own rules. One of the most notable beauty vloggers to break through this mold is Patrick Starr, who has over 4 million subscribers on YouTube, and calls himself the minority of minorities. He is gay, plus-sized, Filipino, and he does makeup. Patrick Starr may also exemplify how marginalized masculinities fits into the beauty community. Another notable beauty vlogger is James Charles, who also signifies how this shift in YouTube's beauty community has transferred over into mainstream media. In 2016, James became CoverGirl's first male spokesperson and led to other male models used in other mainstream beauty campaigns. Okay, so this is my final look. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I think that it's important to continue discussing how YouTube's beauty community affects the performance of gender. Whether these effects have positive or negative implications varies from beauty vlogger to beauty vlogger, but I believe the subversion of gender norms is one of the beauty community's strongest abilities because of its emphasis on user-generated content. We create the content that we want to see.